Sons and daughters of God, the chosen ones, chosen to sit with the Lord. You're sitting with him right now. The kingdom of heaven is here on earth and it is surrounding you right now at this very moment. Use your imagination. That's why God gave us imaginations, because he has a very good imagination. He imagined you before he spoke you into existence. So our imaginations are very powerful and they're creative. Obviously, they must be creative in order for God to imagine you and to be able to create you. I mean, he <laughs> imagines you very, very well. I mean, every hair that's on your head and he has them numbered, so on and so forth. But, um, you know, I'm looking here in uh, Revelation, I was asking the Lord what to talk about and um, what to pray about. In Revelation chapter 1, um, verse 7, you see, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him in all kingdoms of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Now, if any man, you know, you may have friends and relatives that are following after people. There's a, there's a lot of false Christ coming up now. I, even some false Christ are trying to get on TV to tell the world that, that he's here. Now, I ran into one on YouTube. Um, he left a message on my one of my uh, comment sections saying that he was to Christ, but nobody will believe him. Now, when Jesus Christ, and then they got they got one in Australia, they got one some in Australia, they got some in the UK, and people are going after these guys, thinking that these are that these guys call themselves Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I'm him. I'm him. But I'm telling you, well, the Bible is telling you, and, and, and if you know someone that has this issue, you can ref, ref, go to the scripture. It's Revelation chapter one, verse seven. It's obvious. That um, we will all see him because he's going to come in the clouds. So the clouds are up in the sky. I mean, it says every eye. And I, I believe if I'm right, that means every single person shall see him at the same time. Not one at a time. We're all going to see him at the same time. It's going to be quite obvious. It's the Lord Jesus Christ because he was going to come in, come, come in, in the clouds, and he won't be alone. There are many angels with him also, too. And I believe he's going to be riding a white horse when he comes also, too. Horse is a horse that flies. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it'll be good for a lot of people, but um, it's, it might not be good for the ones that, um, and also which shall be pierced, pierced. And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail. Because of him, now there will be there will be weeping for joy also too at that time, but everybody won't be saved when he comes through the clouds. People, some people will, and some people won't. But I, I maybe the people that see him coming through the clouds, they'll be convinced at that time, and they all they have to do is repent and um, and call on the Lord, and then they'll be saved. So there's an opportunity for everybody because we're in the end times now. And um, he's going to he's gonna be coming. And, um, you know, right after the uh, cashless society, the, the mark of the beast, the, the one world government, which is, uh, these things are all in place right now. They're just waiting to be implemented. Um, the tribulation, you know, and even the rapture. You know, these things are coming up. You know, there's going to be a World War uh, three, and everything. These things are all in the making right now. Uh, Jerusalem will be, will go to war. It'll be, the, there'll be a great war there. It's called Armageddon. But um, the Lord will finally come. And when he, when he does this, he'll be setting up his kingdom for 1,000 years. That'll be the millennial reign of Christ which a lot of us will have an opportunity to help rebuild the earth because the earth will be unrecognizable um, at this point. The maps, you can just throw them away or keep one as memorabilia because they're not going to be accurate at all. There'll be water where there's no water before and there'll be land where there's no land before. 
There are mountains underneath the ocean right now that will rise and there'll be uh, land that is uh, sitting on top of the ocean right now will sink. And you don't know where it's going to be at. So um, where you live at right now could possibly be underwater one of these days. And along with thousands of miles of area around it. So Revelation 1-7 clearly explains how the Lord will come back. And every man, woman, child, animal, blade of grass, mountains, drop of water will be will be able to see it. Here in he Hebrews chapter 11, very important. A lot of people want faith. I would highly recommend that you don't ask God for faith. Because when you do, when you the reason why is because when you ask for faith, you're asking for tests and you're asking for trials. And you don't want more than it that's already allotted to you. It's probably not a smart thing to do to ask God for faith. You have faith inside of you. You have every single thing inside of you that you need to survive and to thrive, including faith. And, you know, if you if you need to do an exercise to increase your faith, sit down with a piece of paper and a pen. Go, go ahead and grab one and, you know, make a note to write down, you know, things that God you can, you can stop this video and get that piece of paper and pencil. I don't want you to forget this. Write down all the things that you have prayed for and God has answered for you. From from now, from just go backwards. You know, things today, yesterday, anything you can think of, anything you can remember. Keep it in your pocket in case something pops in your head tomorrow or the next day or the next day. You can just pull out the piece of paper and write it down. You, you have the faith already. And you see... You, you want to get to the point where your faith is for right now, because it's, it's saying now faith. OK, it's not saying yesterday's faith, it's not saying future faith, it's saying now to be able to trust and believe in God for every single thing. I mean, including food. If you never, if you know, one of these days you might not have food. You're going to have, you're going to, have to trust God for food. He'll give it to you. Water, you know, shelter. You know, because things are going to be kind of difficult for a lot of people in these end times. As you can see, if you've been paying attention to what's going on around the world, you can see the floods. People are becoming homeless instantly. You know, they had jobs, they had cars, they had homes, you know, food and refrigerator and electricity and all this stuff. And all of a sudden they don't have nothing. So, but if you have the now faith, it is a substance and a substance could be is is food. And when I eat my food, I know that it's definitely a substance going inside of my body. So faith, that's what it is. It's a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you can't see, you can't really see what you're hoping for and believing in, but you just kind of get, get to the point where you just know that, um, you know, you just know that God is going to be there for you. You know, you start talking like that too. You know, start, start being positive about those things, too. You know, because if, if, if the market of the beast comes along and they, they say, yeah, you can't buy, buy or sell, you can't feed your family, you can't pay your rent. And um, you don't have any faith, you're going to probably get it. You know, because you don't want to see your children hungry, your husband hungry, pets hungry, you know, homeless and, and such and stuff like that. But if you have the faith, which you already do have. You see, but you got to practice it. See, faith is something you need to practice. You know, and you can you can ask God for things, and then when He gives, when He blesses with you with these things, whether it be the same day, a lot of times they do things for you the same day, or it might be a year or two from now. Write it down. Remember it. Look, I had faith. You know, you got to start somewhere. You know, even if it's a little bit, little bit, it's the size of the grain of a mustard seed. You know, which is mustard seed is really tiny. I mean, the thing is, this girl gave me one a mustard seed one time. I lost the thing. I tried to save it. I couldn't even find it when I went back to look for it. It was so small. So I lost it. That's how small a mustard seed is. And that's that's that that that's, that's a lot of faith, you know, to God. You know. So that's what we want to do: is have faith right now. And so we need to press into that. 
You know, you believe God for impossible things. You know, I still believe God's going to save every single person in my family. And I got thousands of family members all over the world, you know, Africa, and United States, Australia, you know, UK, all over the place. My lineage is very, very long. And I know that God is going to save them all. You, can, you can't tell me that they, he won't. Because I, because I know the word of God. He said, "Ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and it shall be done." And he wrote, "That's got to be in there dozens of times." You know, it's written three times on the same page. I believe that's in Timothy. Well, you can look it up. Do your own research. It, but they're going to all be saved, and I'm going to see them all in paradise. I'll get a chance to meet them and everything. And the thing about it is, I won't see them get saved. Most of them, because they don't. It doesn't look like they're ever going to get saved. It's impossible. They're drug abusers and, and, and all kinds of things, you know, blasphemers and all this stuff, you know. But I just, I just know God will save them, you know. That's my faith. I trust God. I believe Him. And so you get to that point. It didn't take. I did, that didn't come overnight. I have to practice that. You know, I actually have to convince myself of it by reading the Word. And really believing and trusting in everything that I read and not doubting any of it. You know, that's a big job right there. But when you get to that that point where you just know, you say, I oh, know, I won't deny Jesus Christ. I'm not taking that mark. You say, well, we're going to we're going to kill you if you don't. Well, go ahead. I'm going to heaven if you do right now. God bless you. You want my head? Oh, it's OK. Go ahead and take my head. Take my head. Jesus loves you. And then you go to heaven. That's faith. That's the kind of faith that you want to have. Because that, I don't wish that upon anybody, but that's happening today, right now. And people are doing just what I said. And they're meeting the Lord. The entire families are. Today. So you want to be able to get to that and teach children to, uh, to get to this point also, too. So... I don't like talking about the end times much, but I'm a, I, I, for some reason I have to, you know, and I don't like talking about the mark of the beast, you know, the, the cashless society. I don't like to see people suffer, but, you know, if we got to go through it, we were chosen to do it and um, let's come out, you know, glory, let's give God all the glory and, um, and praise all the way through it. Live a glorious life, live a glorious death, you know. So we're going to do a, a short declaration on faith out of Hebrews chapter 11. You can do this with your family every day, your, your church. You can do it with your church declarations every single day. And um, you all grow closer to the Lord every single time you do it. And you create an immense amount of power, too. So you do the declaration of the same version of the Bible out loud. And then you go around the room and everyone says their individual prayers. It's called intercessory prayer. After, after you're all done. Then um, go your separate ways and encourage everyone to keep talking to God because he is with you. He's always with you, always listening. And you just wait. Just learn how to wait. Faith, Waiting is part of faith. And this waiting is like the hardest thing on earth to do is to be able to wait for something that you want from God. But that's called test, being tested, being tried. And... Just be patient. That's part of why you're here. Is to be. That's part of the grooming process for you to be able to rule the universe with God one of these days. To learn how to wait. Learn how to be patient. And you got to do that here. I don't know if you're going to be having to do a whole lot of waiting and be patient up there. You know, in heaven. You know, I don't know how that works up there. But you have to do it here, and you got to do it now. So, and go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you like. And um, give a thumbs up so other people around the world can see the video. So we're going to do um, Hebrews chapter 11, um, verses 1 through 6. Ready? Mm -hmm. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the words of the frame are the look of God, so that things that are seen are not made of the things through a point.
the faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was not God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated, and he should not see death, and was not found, because God tra translated him. And for his, his translation, he had his testimony, but he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you very much for dying on the cross for me. Lord, I repent and ask forgiveness for every sin I've ever committed in my entire life. And I thank you for saving all of my family members. I look forward to meeting them all in paradise, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for this now faith that is already inside of me, Lord Jesus. I pray that you, you know, raise it up inside of me. and then Allow me to be able to use it to the best of my ability, Lord Jesus Christ. Because my faith is part of you, part of your spirit, Lord Jesus Christ. Let this faith um, increase, this, increase my um, the substance of the things that I hope for, Lord Jesus. Let it let this faith create immense amounts of power for the things that I I pray for, Lord Jesus Christ. I just want to have, I just want to believe in you and trust in you for every single thing from now on. That's really all I want to do. I'm not praying for faith because I already have it. I want to see the evidence of the things uh, that aren't seen, Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I know that you will show it to me, Lord Jesus. Because I know that without faith, it's impossible to please you, Lord. And I want to please you, Father. And you, you say that, he that, it, uh, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And I believe that you are. And I, and I, really, I really love you, and I, th I appreciate you for loving me back, Lord Jesus Christ. I really want to believe in you and trust in you, Lord Jesus Christ. Because I want your rewards, Lord Jesus. You say you are a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. I want to be able to diligently seek you every single day, all day long, Lord Jesus Christ, in prayer, missing a meal every now and then with fasting, praising you, worshiping you for 10 or 15 minutes a day with my favorite music, reading your Bible for a few minutes a day, a chapter out of the Bible, Lord, I really want to diligently seek you. And if I'm not, show me how to do it. Just show me your way, Father. Show me your way. I would love to be translated, just like Enoch was, to, um, to the kingdom of heaven instead of just dying here on earth. That is what I really want, is to be finally translated. If I can get to that point, if I can get my faith to that, that point where I will be translated, that would be a great testimony. And I thank you, Father, for and I honor you and I praise you and I give you all the glory for, for hearing my prayer, Lord Jesus. And Father, feed, shelter, give fresh water to all of the people around the world that need it today. And let them know that you love them very much individually as if they were your only son's son or daughter, Lord Jesus. Fill up their bellies with water, fill up their bellies with food, give them a house to live in, clean clothes, boots, shoes, hats, coats, you know, shirts, pants, whatever they need, Lord Jesus. Just let everybody know that you love them and save every last soul on this planet, Lord Jesus, if you can. And um, keep them all once they're saved. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I honor you. I glorify you forever and ever and ever. Amen.